Julian Edwards, the man! پای راست خوبی دروازه موقت عالی بچه ما نکونه و توی دروازه توی دروازه گل برای ایران جواد نکونه یک زده حمله برای تیم ایران شک میگیره یه اشتباه حرکتی از کوچان نجات برسه برای کوچان نجات توی دروازه توی دروازه گل برای ایران کوچان نجات دقیقه شستم ایران رو در خاک کره جنوبی یک برسه جلو میندازه کره جنوبی سف ایران یک خود نکونا میزنه توپ رو به توی دروازه توی دروازه حساب کار یک برصف برای ایران اعلام میشه پاس بازی جهان بخش یه فضای عالی برای رضایی ها نفری حمله میکنه خود رو آمی پاس عالی یک در حالا گل گل برای ایران سردار ایرانی دروازه کره ای ها رو باز میکنه و هست بازی کنه 33 ساله فرصت هست به ایران توی دروازه توی دروازه گل ابقل به قطع دفاعی استفاده کردن در رضا ملی او هست بازی کنه 33 ساله فرصت هست به ایران توی دروازه توی دروازه گل ابقل به قطع دفاعی استفاده کردن در رضا او تو پسر میگذارن این قیشی برگردونه توی دروازه یه گل تماشایی از مهدی چارمی ارسال توپ از امیری به روی دروازه اثر ناقص توی توپ نشست قشنگ رو پای تارمی و تبدیل شد به گل حال هم میاد که بازی بکنه ارسال تو به روی دروازه و چه ضربه سری چه ضربه سری امروز دلش خواست کرد مهدی تارمی و جالب اینجاست که احمد مدنی این توپ رو هم نتونست بلند به روی دروازه اینم گل پنجم اینم گل پنجم یه نتیجه یه سالگی براش رخ میده روی تیره یک چه ضربه سری زد چه ارسالی رو حاج صفی انجام داد چه پشت محبته جریمه با پای چپ یه ضربه دیگه و اونجا دراز کش تو پره کورنر میکنه به ایران بر یه کاره تاکتیکی از بازی کنه یه کاره یه جنوبی با تیره دروازه است که ناجی ما میشه آره عالی تاکتیکی کره ای که یه مقدار آروم به توپ ضربه میزنه دوباره نور و لاهی و فرصت تیر دروازه کره جنوبی به لرزه در میاد حالا جواب اون تیر دروازه رو نور و لاهی با این شوت میده جای بلند در زمین ما یه لحظه اشتباه فرصت برای کره خطرناک از بیران و میاد زاویه رو تنگ میکنه ولی فایده نداره و دروازه ما باز میشه روی پاس بلند یه نوع همانگی بین مدافعین که علی علی پور رو به تیم ملی دعوت میکنه این میتونه نقطه امید بخش باشه برای فوتبال ما و توی دروازه بازگشت سری بازگشت سری به بازی نقطه خوشحال کننده این مسابقه است برای فوتبال ملی ما با مارک ویلموز باید آشمیان هم اونجا دیدیم و پور علی جنجی به نوعی که حالا اگر بخوایم بگیم در سری مقصر بود تو گلی که خوردیم اینجا اشتباهشو جبران میکنه Welcome to another edition of Gold the Zone, everyone. We're fresh off two convincing displays of the new style of new coach Mark Wilmots. Uh, Iran, as we all know, got a convincing victory over Syria 5-0. Turned around a few days later, played in Seoul, South Korea, into a very heated atmosphere. If you follow us on social media, you saw the, the heated video of, of South Korea pepping up this game with the The, dr- the dramatism, criticizing the Iran players, and we'll get to that. But nonetheless, it ended in a 1-1 draw. Uh, Iran uh, conceding first and then getting uh, an own goal themselves to even it up, and it ended 1-1. Guys, that's that's where we start today. Uh, I want to let uh, each of you guys do yourselves uh, and then uh, start with uh, your reactions to both of these friendlies. Our founder, Pasha Hajian, who was recently... featured in a preview to the Korea game 
by K League United and uh, and one of their writers, Steve Price, who's featured on an article with them. Pasha, I want to get uh, your reaction first to this game and uh, what uh, happened with your expectations and were you satisfied? Yeah, so we're going to talk obviously now first about the soccer again before we talk about the series again because it's in, uh, fresh is in everybody's mind. But as you guys know, uh, the last time South Korea scored against us was eight years ago. And now they finally scored against, which is pretty darn crazy. And to know the memory that we had in, uh, you know, in South Korea, obviously with Reza Gucci and the Shots goal back that made us qualify to the 2014 World Cup. So, you know, we always have that soft spot, but my expectations honestly was that the, I wouldn't even care if we lost, to be honest. Um, you know, South Korea really treated this match as more than as a friendly with their fans and, you know, the shenanigans the federation put out with the video. For me, it was just more about, you know, Mark Wilmot understanding who his players are, um, you know, what he wants from them. They under, the players understand what his philosophy is. And from, from my, what I gathered, you know, compared to Carlos Kersh's well-organized team is that we gave them a lot of space, and that's because of how more of a fluid attacking side we were. Uh, there were some crazy stats that I said that we had like 16 shots, you know, that wouldn't necessarily happen under Carlos Cato. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and then I believe that, I don't know if Pejman and uh, Ario would agree, but I realized that because we're playing, uh, I believe under Wilmot, he's going to have a high line. He's going to push our defenders a little bit high up fourth. It actually made us concede. Uh, Morta Zapurati Genji and Mohamedi unfortunately made a very silly error. Um, you know, we wouldn't expect them to even make that error, you know, uh, combining with each other. And that made us concede. But for me overall, this was just more of the fact that, you know, for women to understand who we have and whatnot. But from, from my gathering and everything, I would say that I was really disappointed in Kari Mansari fired again. Um, even against Syria, I, would, I felt like he wasn't, you know, up to his form and everything. But overall, I would say we had a, you know, good performance. You know, we came back even though uh, we drew. But uh, what I could say from my two games that I understood from, you know, Mark Wilmot is that he wants an attacking position style of football, you know, more of a 4-3-3, you know. But the biggest thing that I appreciate from him is that how quickly he's immersed himself you know, with the players and, you know, how quickly, you know, of how passionate he is on the sidelines and everything. And that's what you want to see because uh, as Iranians, you know, and even our players, we drive off of passion and those emotions really do help us, you know, in a match. But overall, I was very satisfied with these two games. There's not much to be complained about, you know. Um, you know, we just got to keep going forth uh, from now on. As my far side, would like uh, your reaction next. Well, the thing is, uh, this is Carlos Kairos' team. This is his legacy. Wilmots became uh, announced as a coach officially like a week before the game or even less than that. So uh, I don't know how much he can held, be held responsible for the win or even if it would be a, a loss. With that said, I'm really impressed of the speed of uh, they ran a national team, especially against uh, Syria. Although Syria was missing a couple of key players, Iran feels a really strong team. And I was actually surprised to see how easy and how fast uh, the team was able to pass each other and quickly uh, go to the opponent's half and uh, getting a couple of goals, of course, but also letting the ball do the job and uh, don't don't make it too hard. So I'm really impressed by that uh, win. And I think, I, I do believe that it was... Uh, morally really important for uh, Mr. Wilmot to get a start like this. Even I, if I do believe that he, he can, I think he knew himself that he can be held responsible for this, but at some extent he will still get the credit for it. And it's it's good to start with, you know, uh, 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 with something positive. It makes things much more easier. And that's why I'm also impressed yeah, with the game against uh, Korea, which is, of course, a much harder opponent than Syria. Uh, the Korea game was, uh, as as I expected, uh, the Koreans will do some, uh, will give a hard time to Iran. They will do their very best to score and they don't see it as a friendly. Neither do Iran, to be honest, because we didn't see the game with like six, seven changes from each team. Uh, Korea was were, were close to score a couple of goals, Iran as well. All in all, I think the draw was 
fair and uh, uh, reflected how the game was in total. So uh, before I go into much about uh, Wilmot and the future, I just hope that during the six to 12 months, or maybe actually six to 12 days, it was up to me, but as soon as possible, three or four of these uh, squad players should leave by themselves. If not, uh, we almost, you know, you have to kill his darlings, uh, <laughs> the, the Federation's darlings, such as Masoud Shujoi and uh, Pejman Montazeri, uh, maybe even Bahid Amiri, although he's not that old and he's come kind of late to the national team, but uh, maybe even Ashkan, I don't know. There are a couple of players that uh, we should think about. Are they ready to play in the World Cup uh, in 2022? I, I really don't know about that, but we can talk about that sooner. Thank you, Pejman. Our third panelist today is uh, Arya Alaverdi. Uh, Arya, I want uh, your thoughts as well. You know, I, I thought there was there was two good results. But first of all, we, did, we didn't lose the games, which is very good to think about. Because you, I thought a lot of people were criticizing um, uh, Will Mott for having a sort of negative style of coaching, where they thought he wasn't tactical enough, where he, they thought that. Will Motts maybe you know in his time in Belgium uh, didn't show like he was a a a, a real coach you know maybe he got he got lucky because he was a striker you know for for Belgium when he was younger in his, in his footballing career and he got lucky to be a coach but the criticisms that that were given towards him by various people I thought was unfair because you have to understand that Iran is not is not a world class team. Iran is not a world class team. They're, they're, if you're going to be realistic, yes, we're probably 20th ranked in FIFA, but we're probably the the 40th best team in the world, the 30th best team in the world. We're not going to be able to get top class coaches. We got lucky to get Carlos Queiroz, and when we got Carlos Queiroz at the start of it, he struggled as well. He had a hard time, and then he came in. He he got the results. Um, we have to be happy with Will Moss because Will Moss is not a bad coach, you know, you have to understand that p- p- people like Wilmots, when they come into Iran, their f- their first thought is, I need to get to know these players. He has to get to know all the players that play in, in the Iranian league, that play in, in, in foreign countries, like in Qatar, etc. Because his job is not to get the best tactical tactical uh, setup for Iran. That, that's not his job. Right now, it's not his job. Kairos has been doing that for too much for too long. I, th- I think that is a little bit overblown by Kairos actually. I think um, Kairos's tactics was, was were good for the World Cup, but I think it kind of it kind of became a little bit um, annoying to look at from an outside perspective when he was playing against weaker teams. And then we look at Wilmots now. You know, you're playing against Syria. How how we easily beat them five 0 You know, I, I thought yes, Syria is not the strongest side, but for example, we we drew Syria two two in the qualifiers, yeah, and that was under Kairos. And I'm not saying Kair, Kair, it was Kairos's fault, but I'm saying that the players need to the players in weaker teams like against weaker teams like Syria, against weaker teams like like Turkmenistan, whatever. We have to have a, a way of playing where it's free, you know, where the players are allowed to express themselves. Players like Godus when he's when he's available to play, he will strive in those games. Against South Korea, we saw, like, especially in the second half, when you had players like Nurullahi and Amiri come on, and their their first thought was, um, I have to try and protect 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 the lead, um, protect the game, you know, not concede. And I, and I feel like that, that's something that's kind of stuck in their mind from the you know, Kairos era. I think that Wilmot's will, like like Pasha said, he'll try and sort of remove that not not so much to the point where we're going to become a very attacking team because again like I said before we're not a top 10 team in the world we can't play attacking football all the time but we have to have a way of playing where it's a bit more free because we have players like Koli Zadeh like Jan Bash who can create chances from that kind of style so um, like I said before I don't want to see people criticising Wilmots because he was bad for Belgium because Belgium played against Portugal, Spain, or Holland, you just can't you can't compare it. I think it's a bit unfair. And then when, when we were speaking about his um, his wages as well, we were saying, oh yeah, he's making one point five million a year, and it's not justified. For me, it's justified. I think that's a fair wage because 
the, no other coach would have came in for any lower than that, and I don't think any coach should come into Iran earning um, five hundred thousand pound a year. It's, it's not going to work, you know what I mean. So I think it's a fair wage, and I hope that he continues this way. You brought up great points, sorry, of of the the, the more freedoms of the players had. It, you, you seem you feel like uh, he allows the attackers to uh, express themselves, open up more attacks and really put focus on that, and not as much as the defense, which obviously contra- contrasts with Karosh. Um, I want to rewind uh, to the expectations coming into in, coming into the Syria game. Uh, we weren't entirely sure if there is an organized approach with the lineup, or, or rather just evaluating him, evaluating uh, how they would show up. And he brought, uh, guys, you can correct me if you want, but brought more or less an the, the A- minus kind of, of, of team, uh, obviously there was no Samankoros, there is no Saraz Moon. Uh, those are two core attackers. However, and sorry for uh, starting on top, and then uh, the rest that, that joined in with the goal scoring, and it got started in the 30th minute with Jahan Baksh. Tarami had a hat trick, had a fantastic game, including the flashy bicycle kick goal. Guys, just going over the, the, the subs a little bit, he, he did throw in Ezatali later in the game, as well as Shojai, Tarabi. Really no big surprises. And then there came Syed Manesh. The hire was not official until, until June 2nd. And then already into this game, there's a big contrast in the style of play, and it paid off against, against Syria. So, Pasha, I want to ask you, uh, how much did that – contrast in, in philosophy for the Syria game uh, really benefited Iran. Yeah, to be honest with you, even if we were to play under Carlos Kairos, I would still believe that we should have still defeated Syria uh, 5-0 or something. Uh, but for me, what was interesting is that, you know, he played, again, uh, Had Safi in the middle. Uh, he plays Mohamed as a left back, and as we all know, even Sinai Simon, he's not here with us, but he's he's always been talking about how great of a player Essan is in the middle, and as we saw that, and then imagine Omid Ibrahim had a fantastic game, and so it'd be good to see even having you know Saeed Azatulay in that mode. For me, honestly, what was the most important thing is that these are the sort of matches that Will Mods could assess his attacking players and see how he could mold them for the bigger oppositions. For example, a lot of the times I realize that I, I as a Jahan Bash was playing more of a center forward and saying more as like a, you know, behind the striker kind of deal, ordeal. And who knows, maybe that's a position that down in the future he will play. And I wouldn't be as begged, uh, and I wouldn't, excuse me, I wouldn't be even surprised if one day we'll see, you know, as a John Bash even playing as a false nut or something like that, which is like what he did in Azad al at many times of matches. For me, the most important thing, guys, and I'm going to bring this back to Pejman and Arya, is that how great of a player Tarami has been for us. I think currently he's probably the most informed player we have. For the reigning national team, in the sense that on the form he's for the team, Mendy, um, hat trick. I mean, he's just been such a fantastic footballer. There was many doubts that I had over him of why Carlos Queiroz called him up and whatnot, but he's been keep performing on a consistent level. Could you, was, <clears throat> could you imagine how how good he would have been if he went to Europe when he was younger? Yeah, Do you know, know what I mean. mean? You know, it's but crazy, I'm, man. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, even the way he talks, you know, he's not the most, I would say, professional. Yeah, uh, and intellectual. <laughs> yeah, exactly, intellectual. But it goes on to show you what kind of coach Kairos was that he identified these sorts of uh, talent. And for me, that was the biggest thing is that how consistent he was. And I'm, uh, I could imagine even he was playing for us against the Japan match in semifinals. Things probably would have been different, but... It's football. Things happen. For me, guys, the bigger pictures, we really don't know what's exactly is going to happen with, you know, Wilmos and this uh, team and everything. But for me, the biggest thing right now is that if the Iranian Football Federation has brought in an attacking manager, as we all wanted to, coming from a very defensive, compact team, and with the players we have that are very good, and as, you know, Samson pointed out, Syed Manish, he's most likely going to join Fanner Bakshi. He's 17 years old, very highly there. We have a good crop of footballers, attacking footballers. Let this man rebuild the team, and let's see how far he goes. There's going to be moments we're going to question him. That's normal. But even even as Arya said, nobody is going to come to Iran right now, um, to be honest with the, with the situation that Iran is, unfortunately. But 
that comes back to the Federation of giving this man time. And let's just try to build for the future. But we shouldn't really overthink it. I saw on Twitter a lot of people were hyping it up. Oh, wow, we feel like we got to get a very attacking manager. This is great and whatnot. Guys, it's just two games in. There's a long, long way to go. In September, we'll see more of what kind of a team coach Wilmot is. But one thing that I do really want to say is that he, what was really surprising to me is how quickly he's really immersed himself, you know, and I'll let the other guys speak now. But, um, you know, for me, that's the most important thing that I could see that he's a very passionate person. And that's what we need. We need a very passionate guy like Carlos Karras was. Open-ended, guys. Open-ended. I want to want to ask, just to build off of what of, of what Pasha said. You said rebuilding the squad. Come on, Arya. I, I want to ask you guys, does Wilmot need to rebuild right now? Or is he just building on? It's too early to say. I mean, this squad is chaos squad. <laughs> As you said, Syed Manesh, he was the only debutant for the national team yeah, in the squad. I believe that Adipur was in the national team once before, or maybe in the OMI team. I don't quite remember. But anyways, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if we're going to get rid of these older players, uh, such as Montezeri, Shojoy, and a couple of more, uh, then it's a, a better label should be rebuilding. But uh, if we're going to continue with this squad, that to be honest, did really good uh, in these two friendlies. Um, we, we, it's not rebuilding, it's uh, keeping consist- consistency. And uh, maybe that's not such a bad thing. And the, the thing is, the next time Iran will play a game will be in September probably and that's where the when the World Cup qualifiers uh, begin for Iran and they will play uh, three teams uh, like one of them is a, a, a from the stage one qualifiers it, you know it could be like I don't know was it like Guam or Cambodia or some team like that and two other teams that Iran should beat maybe the strongest kind of teams would be like Oman or Jordan or something like that so um I have yeah. a question for you, and then Arya is going to talk about this. So sorry to cut you, but this is really important sure. to me. The reason why I say rebuilding is that imagine now we have uh, Ashwana Deja, yeah, uh, he's coming close to his career, uh, Masuda Shujai, uh, Pejmana Montaziri. I mean, these guys are team leaders, and I don't really think we need much of them. And, uh, do you really guys think that they're just there? I mean, they didn't get, I mean, Ashwana yeah. wasn't part of the team. I think so. You know, because or, because look at it, look at look at look at it this way, right? We always say, oh yeah, like Shoyo is a really experienced player, the Jagaz a really experienced player. But what does experience really mean? Experience just means that he's played in, in a lot of games throughout his career, in big matches, in bigger leagues. But look at Ansari Fah, look at Jahan Bash. Jahan Bash has been in two World Cups, two Asian Cups. He's been he's been in Europe for nearly five years. Ansari Fah has been playing in Europe for nearly six, seven years. Um, Hoysaf, he's made a hundred caps, way more than the Jaga. Um, it's a total law. He's been been in Europe for a long time. Sadar Osman has been been to one World Cup, nearly almost been to two World Cups. We've got a lot of experienced players. There's nothing wrong with the experience part of the. Uh, the only thing that that needs to happen is we need to patch a few of the the squad. The squad is pretty good. The squad right now is pretty good. There's a couple of players like Montazeri can get replaced very easily. You know, get a new center back in. Um, and one thing, I, something that came out this morning in the news was that uh, in the end of July, um, Hashimian and Wilmot are going to set up a camp for the PGPL, the Iranian League players, all the young Iranian League players, to come in and have like a like two friendlies against like you know crappy teams. But they're going to play two friendlies just to see how they are, just to, just domestic players. And then at the end of August, they'll add the lead juniors in and they might, might play against Japan as in a friendly against Japan, which is a really, a really, really strong team. And we have, we have obviously the previous game against in the semifinals against them. So I think that the fact that he's doing that, it shows that he's not going to rebuild the team, but he's going to add something different uh, in the positions that are already pretty old, like Dejaga. You can replace him very easily. You know, we have players like Delphi, like Shikari, who can come in and do do good things. You know, you have players like uh, Iman Salimi who plays in Terrell Sazi. You have Donish Gar who had a good season for SM World. You have good players who can come in and replace these players. And I think it's just about recognising them for himself, Wilmots, and then actually giving them a chance to, to play. 
I'm interested to hear uh, Pejman's point on this uh, before we move on. Is Pejman, let's say that Ashkan Dejaga, Masu Shoyre, Montazeri, they all leave, right? Um, you know, Bill must realize that there's not much of use there in the old generation. Who's going to be the team leader then that you want to see? Um, because that's what I meant by rebuilding is that we, we got to have new faces. We got to have new people to trust, you know, it's going to yeah, be interesting. Yeah. You know, who, that's what I meant by rebuilding is that who's going to be, who's going to come and replace these guys with shoes. And right now, what I'm thinking about it is that who do we really have as a leader on this team, uh, when these guys leave? That's a fair question. Uh, and it's interesting. Uh, I don't think that we have anyone that can replace the importance of Masood in the squad, taking care of the new guys, uh, of the young guys. Uh, some of those uh, also actually told me that uh, Masood Shujai really had his back when he was in the first uh, training camps with Iran. When he was totally new, you know, he has never been in the country, and uh, Masood was there giving him. a lot of faith and confidence and, and talking to him and taking care of him. Uh, listen, uh, somebody else can take, can fill those shoes, but in his own way, you don't, you don't need to be a new Masood. And for me, I don't know, to be honest, we don't know these players uh, outside the pitch. Uh, I'm sure there are one or two players that can take that role and they don't even have to be experienced or old. I mean, I don't know, maybe somebody that have a lot of faith in the air. Yeah. As a football player, I maybe think of Sardar Osmoon. Is he up for the challenge to become a leader? I believe that we talked about this uh, uh, one or two parts ago, that uh, maybe it's time for Sardar Osmoon to become the captain of the team and, you know, stepping up and being that role model and taking responsibility more than just being a part of the team. So maybe Sardar can do that. I do believe that Jahan Bakhsh uh, sets a perfect example of how to be a gentleman on and off the pitch. I'm sure that he can do that pretty good, although we know that he struggled in the team with Kairosh, but you know he's still young. He's still got a lot to give, and I'm sure if we can take out the best of Jahan Bakhsh, he can be that leader. We have another uh, leader and also a captain in Ehsan Haj Safi that I do believe that he can make the best out, out of that situation. And I think he's ready to step up and be that kind of leader that we're, we're asking for. So one thing that came to my mind is uh, the Swedish national, national team and Slatan Ibrahimovic, you know, and we all know he's one of the best players in the world and one of the best, and the best Swedish player we ever had. After the, he quit the game, uh, basically, Sweden didn't have any famous players. The most famous one were maybe somebody playing in the Bundesliga in Red Bull Salzburg, Emil Forsberg. People don't know him that much if you're not football interested. Uh, so there, there were some concerns. How can this team progress and do, do good? But Sweden shocked the world and, and came to the quarterfinals in the World Cup. They beat Italy in the playoffs. So... And Sweden, uh, Slatan was by far the most important leader. So if Sweden can do without Slatan Ibrahimovic, I'm sure that Iran can do without Masoud Shujai. Uh, and one last thing, uh, Pasha, you were talking about, uh, you know, uh, a rebuilding or not. But let's not forget, uh, in his last year, Kairosh brought a lot of, new faces to the national team that yeah. we now see as, you know, uh, that they've been there for ages or we count on them. But uh, Majid Hosseini, did he ha- even had like 180 minutes of national team playing before he played in the World Cup? I don't think so. Uh, so, and we see him as the, one of the most important players. So th- that that's interesting. Syed Manj, as we mentioned, his, his new... Ruzbe Cheshmi, it came from the injury and he did really great against Morocco. He had like four games before he, he played. So Beron Van, he's been the goalkeeper for now three or four years, something like that. Uh, it's not that much, to be honest. Uh, so we have a couple of new faces in the national team that, you know, Cairo started to rebuild. Sadeq uh, Moharami as well. So no, let's not forget about those players. So the rebuilding have already started, in my opinion. 
Yeah, that's that's exactly what we're trying to get at is that, you know, this is what I meant rebuilding is that we have these good crop of players, but the team needs to get now molded into a Walmart team. Now, this, our coach has came in an interview and mentioned that, or not an interview, excuse me, in a press conference, mentioned that we should play a position style of football. That's what he wants in attacking. The first person that came to my mind and how good of a player he's been for club level and uh, Iranian national team, besides as to late, now coming to you guys is that how big of a player do you guys see him playing in that system? Because he's, he's going to be pivotal in order to have that position style of game. Saeed is a great player, man. Saeed is a, he's a specimen. If you, if you ever see him in real life, like I, I, when I was watching him in, against Algeria when I was at the stadium, he is a big lad. Like he is huge. Like he's what, one, one meter, one meter 90? Like for a midfielder, that is very, very, uh, advantageous. So, like, if you look at, for example, uh, McTominay who plays for Man United when he was playing against Barcelona, you see how how uh, how a, a physically tall player like like that in midfield with the technical ability can be so advantageous to a team like like Iran or like Man United, for example, and because uh, Ezatullah gives you that um, the chance against stronger teams when you're a, when you're an underdog. He'll give you a chance because he has the ability to win the ball in the air and on the ground with ease. Um, you know, like if we if we had only had played Ibrahimi against Portugal and against Spain, and Ezatullah didn't play, I think we'd have struggled because Ezatullah he gives you that chance to win the ball back and in the air and on the ground and then pass it in and maybe he can shoot. Whereas Ibrahimi is only going to do maybe two of those things. So I think that. You know, we missed him against Japan, for example. Um, like that was a real big miss because again, we we didn't have that extra guy to give you that physicality and and, and aerial aerial prowess that he gives the, a team like Iran that we need to have in midfield. And I think that we also missed it against South Korea in the friendlies. So I hope that he comes back and he's fit. He, he looked a bit unfit against these against Syria and South Korea, but when he comes back, he will be a real key player for for World Mars. Uh, speaking of uh, injuries, guys, uh, I don't want to get uh, too off off track from the, the current squad in these in these past few games. Uh, but Majid Hosseini, he has himself had some injury woes, um, as uh, we reported a few days ago. Uh, had surgery out two to six weeks. Guys, do, do y'all think that that the defense missed him? I thought that all Majid questions were only allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> to be answered by the Arya. Uh, oh, man. You go oh, first. Okay. What was the question? Wait, Sorry. I... Majida Hosseini? Is that the question, Samson? Yeah. So how integral do you think that Yeah, is? listen, man. We, we missed him, man. I think against, against South Korea, we missed him, man. Like, when you look at, look at the way Kanon, he, he's a good player, but he's not, he's not world class. Like, I'm not saying Majid Hosseini is world class, but he has the potential to be. And you can see that when he's playing. And um, Pasha was saying that uh, Wilmot will try and play a high line. And if you look at Majid Hosseini, the way he plays, he is suited to a team who has a high line. He plays for Trabzonspor, who, who play that kind of game. And if he comes into Iran and we play a high line, for example, possession football, Majid Hosseini is the guy you want to play because he has passing so good. His, uh, his high line, uh, he, he can really press up and join into the midfield. And it's something that, like um, like Pejman says, you know, we want leaders. And I think that he is a leader in defence. And I think that when, when Purali Ganji, for example, I think when Purali Ganji is missing someone like, uh, like when he was missing um, Say Jalal next to him in defence, you could see, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but he was struggling when he was playing with Ansari, uh, Mohamed Ansari, when he was playing with Khan Zadeh, he would struggle because he wasn't a leader, you know. He's not a leader. He's not a guy who's going to, be a captain. I don't think Prali Ganji is a captain for me. Um, so I think that he needs someone next to him who can who can control the game. And I think Majid is a is a top player. I mean, he was unlucky in the Asian Cup, but I think the, the injury that he got now, hopefully it, it comes. It's not serious because he is a a, a talented guy. Yeah. Can I say uh, one thing before I get to Pejwan really quick? Is that as mentioned before, uh, we want to play position style game, right? So what that really entails is that our defenders, especially our center backs, they might they have to be able to play, you know, 
you know, with the ball, you know, with a position style of game, you know, and I think Majida Hosseini is one of the center backs that his distribution, I would say, is good. Um, obviously, Kandani is far from that. Uh, Cheshmi, I'm not sure, really, to be honest with you. And then you have Mortezo Purali Genji. And uh, my biggest issue, guys, right now is that if we're going to be playing the style of game, you know, and we're going to be playing, you know, position style, and we need, you know, our players to be able to play from the back and everything, you know, um, do you guys see us, like, uh, you know, especially Wilmot's now looking more into finding more depth for our defenders, Pejman? It's really hard to say because Iran won't play any good team, solid teams, at, yeah, for competition in like in a year so I think we can manage with even Kanoni Cheshmi as a duo in the defense and do quite well uh, so how much can we take from a, yeah, a, a game for, uh, with Cambodia I don't really know you know it's it's uh, uh, we would need to look at those tough tests, tests in friendly games and at the end of the game, they're still just friendly games. Uh, and uh, we should not forget that even we, we, we praise him about Majid Hosseini, but he didn't do well in the Asian Cup, as we talked about before in other uh, pods. And I just remembered another really strong leader quitting, and we were oh, quitting, or not getting in the squad, uh, Jalal Hosseini, who was maybe one of a super leader he's been in the national team and for Paris police and nobody misses him now to be honest nobody's even thinking of him Iran didn't collapse man the defense got maybe even better than we we, we would uh, believe so uh, I do believe we can survive with maybe we maybe didn't need a, a leader like that uh, we're coming back to the question of Majid Hosseini and uh, and the type of Play that we believe that we must play the type of system. Uh, these players are professionals and isn't good and smart enough to be able to adjust themselves. If we're supposed to play uh, attacking football, or if we we got a high line, or maybe even have Majid and opposite like a libero, uh, you know, just two meters uh, ahead of Beirland, I think they can all manage. The important thing here is to have a consistency and train on that every time that you're with the national team. And I do believe that's what's made Cairo, Carlos Keller such a great coach in Iran, that we weren't uh, really depending on a single player, although it's good to have your best players available, but the players were so uh, focused and so into the system of what was demanded from them that... Uh, we could see Milad Mohammadi or Ehsan Har Safi both playing at the left back, and we know that we didn't need to be worried because we know exactly what uh, was expected from them. So, can Wilmot uh, take that legacy and continue it? That's the important question. So, if we play attacking or the defenders have a high line, uh, go high up, I don't really think that's important, to be honest. And you can see how, how important Majid Hosseini was for Wilmots because after one game, he, he and obviously he got injured against Syria. He was on the on um, FaceTime with him, you know, m- making sure if he's okay. And it shows how much of a, a good relationship he has with the players now. But um, yeah, I think that we, we have that, that option now. There's other centre-backs in Iran who are, are very good as well who can come in and, and maybe even take the place of Purali Ganji or maybe even uh, Kanani, for example. Like A lot of people, I, I don't I don't personally think that he should get called up because I think uh, he, he really disrespected the, the way um, Iran in general when, he, when we were trying to qualify for the World Cup. Um, talking about Khalid Zadeh, who plays for Paris, but he's a good player. Kaiser, but he is not for me a guy who deserves to get called up because of his character and, and his attitude towards Kairos and, and a time that in a time that we, we needed support from all the Iranians, he's a guy who probably doesn't deserve it. Um, there's other players in Iran like um, but sorry Arya, we should yeah. maybe let bygones be bygones. I just no, I, I agree, I agree, but enough. I think that you have to you have to consider yeah. this. Does he actually yeah. want to play for Iran or does he want to be a Paris Police player? I don't, I don't know if you. I don't know if he wants to play for Iran. For me, I, I, we'll see. 
We'll see what happens with him. But he's a good player, but we'll see what happens with him. There's other players, but I think that there's only a couple that we can consider um, for that position. Well, in that case, guys, uh, get, getting uh, back on track to, to the recent game, um, in Seoul, uh, South Korea, uh, it was nearly a sellout crowd, it looked like, at their uh, World Cup stadium. A, a lot of hype created by the Korean Federation, as as we discussed earlier. But in, in my view, guys, from what I observed, it, it looks like Iran didn't really – it looked like Team Mali didn't really miss a beat. They, they immediately – Went with they stayed with the flow of the game and were able to have a decent first half. Although the defense did look shaky, guys, I'll let y'all discuss. Uh, I'll let you guys discuss that further. And then in the second half, there was the calamity of, of an error, and then things got back on track with the uh, corner kick uh, with the own goal. But uh, you know, not much developed from that. It was a, it was a high pressure game, but uh, it ended up in a draw. And, and guys, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think this was. Obviously, it was not Iran's first top players. This was not an A-plus uh, lineup. Deja, no Dejaga, Shoji started on the bench, obviously coaching decisions, but uh, no Azmoun and no Horos. And, and it seemed like South Korea kind of had, uh, unless I'm wrong, most of all their main players. Uh, Sun, the, the Tottenham star, was captain, and uh, he played uh, uh, was it most of the game or, or all of the game, and and uh, nonetheless, uh, Iran weathered that storm uh, decently. So, uh, in my opinion, it, I thought it was a, a B plus game, uh, cons- considering all of the scenarios. It was not a win, but was this a, a game in which there was a new coach for Iran in the last uh, two two and a half weeks? Yes. Was this a Korean squad with a, an already established coach? Yes. Had they just got done beating? Australia, yes, and then earlier they beat Karoch's Colombia team a few months ago, so I I, th- I would consider this a very comfortable B plus. So and from there from there I'll let you guys take it before we move on uh, with some Twitter questions following these matches. Yeah, the thing I do want to say for me, Andy Sampson, I would say that was near as our team as close it was going to be. Uh, we had one or two players that weren't that you would expect to be starting that lineup, but they were injured. Um, but I would still say that was pretty much our team that we have right now. Uh, but one thing that I want to give a big shout out to our players is that, you know, the Korean league is still going on and whatnot. And so those guys are fresh. And, you know, South Korea has been playing so many more friendlies than we have. We don't have this luxury. So sometimes we need to take this into context that how of uh, with all these issues and everything that we have that these guys still put, they put 110 effort in. It was a very attacking lineup from South Korea. You know, and even Paul Bento still doesn't know what he wants to do with his team. They stuff with the comments he made out of the press conference. But for me, guys, as simple as this, I don't want us to track back and let them come forth. I want Iran finally to attack these teams, you know, attack the lives of Japan, the Australia's, the South Korea's. You know, and I feel if that's that's what we're trying to do, you know, then there's a reason why we brought Mark Wilmots's and I want our players to be attacking. I think I could tell you guys from what it seemed like, and uh, I don't know if you guys will agree, but it seemed like Ramina Rezaan is super excited to play for him because even from his social media posts and everything, he loves to sh- take his shot. Uh, he loves bringing the ball up front. He loves uh, crossing, uh, taking crosses and stuff, you know. And so that's the style of play that I think that Mark Wilmots would even more appreciate is that having his full backs, you know, being able to attack, you know, freely. Now, the question remains is that how is he going to play the likes of Ozmoon, Jahan Bach, Samon Godus, and Tarami together? Right now, I would say Tarami is fully established within this team. So I'll say his place is cemented. The question comes, where is Jahan Bach and Samon Godus going to play? Is he going to play a 4-2-3-1 or is he going to be at, uh, you know, let's say a 4-3-3 where, you know, you really, we really don't have really good uh, stereotypical number 10. But we have another center midfielder, let's say Saeed Azatullahi, Haid Safi, and Omid Ibrahimi. And then you got the likes of Mehdi Tarimi on the left. And then right would be a question whether there's Jahan Bakhsh or uh, Samuel Godus. Or if we're going to be a 4-2-3-1, is Wilmot's going to play all three of those players? Um, you know... Uh, no, I don't hear you guys. Can you hear me? I, th- I, th- I think he could. I think he could play all three of those players. I think that... I think Godus can definitely play... As an as an attacking midfielder, I think that he's really the only guy who can replace 
uh, De Gea, um, you know, in that kind of number 10 position. But I think that... Um, but Arya, before I cut you off really quick, and I'm going to yeah. ask this to Kuzman as well, is that don't you guys just want to finally see our players just attack these likes? Because I feel like even in the Asian Cup final, which, you know, I don't... There's a lot at stake, you Hallelujah. know. Hallelujah. You know, yeah, for sure. you know, I understand, you know, but... For for this is I would say for the first time I would say since in my life watching you know Team Medley play uh, we have so much depth uh, attacking you know and this is the time that if we have brought in a manager such as Mark Wilmot is uh, with all these pressure we have this is the time that we need to use this manager with his philosophy uh, that he believes as is attacking and just attack these teams. And that's what I want to see, end of the day. You know, I don't really care about the well-organized offensive anymore because these players are very well-rooted with Carlos Queiroz. You know, they understand what's in it for them. They understand the tactics now and everything. This is the first time I would say that our players have really understood what tactics even mean um, because of how tactical of a coach Carlos Queiroz was. But for me, guys, what do you guys want to see? Do you guys just want to see us finally attacking these likes? Because that's 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 what I'm super excited about is that finally, let's see how good of a player Saradoro is when is against uh, under an attacking man. We saw how Jaron Bash was flawless under an attacking manager. Salman Godus has been flawless under an attacking manager as we saw in uh, with Graham Potter. So that's that's what I want to see, guys. Yeah, for sure. I, I want to see yani yeah, when we say in uh, persian tormozesh uh, boride and it's probably <laughs> a wrong way to use that but uh, it basically means you know uh, the the brakes ha- have fallen off or they they're not in use anymore you know so so let's just go all for it i mean as you said the depth is amazing in iran uh, we have we have forgotten about kaber azai because he he's been off a season but I'm sure that he will come back and he will be a serious candidate to come back in the national team. Uh, as you said, Oli Zadeh and Salman Qadus, they weren't even uh, in the squad this time. Uh, Karim, uh, I do believe he, he played okay, not as bad maybe that you want to, to, to say, Pasha. Or he, he struggled, sure, but uh, he's always there. He's always creating some chances. But now it's the time to just go forward. I want to see every game. Like the game versus Syria. I want to see a 5-0 game every time. Or at least trying to play like that. Because Iran won't play a tough opponent until a very long time. So why should they train in playing defensively and holding back against these weaker times? Let, let's just kill them all, you know. Yeah, let's just yeah. make Sadar the beast he can be. <laughs> Yeah, one more point before I let uh, Arya speak. And, you know, I know I'm talking too much right now is that Guys, we need to start attacking, and the reason why I'm saying that is we have a good chance of, again, qualifying for the World Cup. And let's say if we start attacking now, and we do a good, decent amount of job, and we qualify for the next World Cup, we'll be already molded into an attacking side that will finally attack whoever we're going to get in 2022. You know, we wouldn't be as much, let's say, afraid of, uh, you know, playing and whatnot. And I think this is a time that, you know, with these likes of players that are coming through, you know, from a young age or the players we have at the helm, this is the perfect time for us to, you know, build this team into an attacking team. And so I'm going to leave this now to Arya. Yeah, and I, I agree with both of you. Like that that kind of uh, mentality of, of going to try and win the game rather than get a result. Um, but there's one thing you have to consider. Uh, like I said, I said before, um, as much as we like to see that, there are times where you have to still understand that the team, if they're if they're coming up against a player like Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi, you have to limit space. That you can't mark Messi or mark Cristiano Ronaldo. You have to limit the space. And it's a shame that you know I, I say this, but I think we still have to play the way we did it with Carlos Queiroz against top top teams because. Um, it doesn't matter. Who, it doesn't matter how how good you are in terms of keeping the ball or in terms of defending. If you have Majid Hosseini at the back, it doesn't, doesn't matter. When you have a player like Messi or you have a player like Cristiano Ronaldo or even like I don't know um, Mbappe for France, you have to limit the space, and that's the reason why we played so defensive in these in these in these games against Portugal against Argentina was because we couldn't offer the players like Di Maria, for example, to get the ball and him, let him score. Uh, because if we do, then we're basically, we're basically marking Messi and then leaving the other players. And, and it becomes a bit of a... It becomes very 
naive in that sense. So we have to understand, yes, we want to become an attacking team, and yes, we need to score more goals and create more chances, etc. And that will come with with players like Hai Safi getting more uh, experience as a captain, Jan Bach and Gordus playing more in terms of having more freedom. But I, I still think that when it comes to the top, top teams like you know, again in the World Cup, if we ever get to the Confederations Cup, for example, we have to still, in my opinion, still play in that defensive mold and and be a counter attacking team. Um, maybe if a bit of a, a difference, you know, maybe we should maybe not let Osmond become so isolated and not let him become the only player in the attack. Um, I think maybe Kairos, uh was relying on. You know, when he when he played high safi as a left back in the World Cup, he was relying on crosses, and I think that you know, there's only so much that Osmond's going to win in the air. You know, he's he's a good header, but he's not going to win every single ball in the air. So you have to kind of create other avenues for attack, and I think that um, Godus playing in the middle is a real, real um, benefit for us. He was missed in the World Cup. I think that he should have played more. Now that he's playing. Uh, in France, I hope that means he's going to play more for Iran as well. But there's, there's again, there's more to it than you think. Than oh, you just become an attacking team. It's, there's more to it. Um, but hopefully, it does happen. Hi, this is Kat, and you're listening to Golbazan. And I hope you continue listening to their amazing podcast. Thank you all for the support. Love you, Golbazan. I now want to move on to our Twitter questions, as promised. And that would we we would get to. Uh, as always, we appreciate all of the feedback that we get on Twitter and Instagram and all of social media in general. Uh, our first question uh, from Ashkan. He wants to know, uh, what has Wilmot overall exceeded the expectations through these first two matches? Based on the, the first two games, do you think he will be successful? Pejma, I'll, I'll let you take that one. Well, Ashkan, uh, what do you think? Uh, because I think it's a good question, but uh, how much can we accept? Or how much did he expect of him and the team being there for just a couple of days uh, it's it's uh, i think it's uh, hard to judge him although i'm i think he's glad uh, he does some take some part of the some credit for the win but uh, the, I, sh- I think we should see it like this uh, until september we must have some time to really think about what he can do as a coach because to be honest, he wasn't really a part of the the, the team to, uh, for the the preparations for the uh, think, game against South sorry, Korea and Syria. I think one thing you have to do, uh, also give credit to is Vaid Hashimian, because he's the only guy who probably knows the players in that in that um, Kadir Fani or the the coaching staff. He's the only guy who knows the players, so I think he he really is real. Um, Real smart to bring him in. I think that he's, he probably takes most of the credit, if, if anything, from these two friendlies. Thanks, guys. Uh, the next question I want to get to, I'll let, uh, I'll let Arya get this. Uh, it's from Borna, at Borna Khovadi uh, on Twitter. He, asks, he says, uh, Jahan Baksh looked like he struggled when there was little space, so he, he, he is so frustrating to watch sometimes. This is... His opinion is so much potential, but he often has awkward first touches. Our midfielders were fantastic, though. Arya, what's what's your response to that? Yeah, I think if you watch against Syria for sure, I think I think you know if you're getting, if you're maybe speaking more about the South Korea game, but against Syria, I thought he was really good. I thought he obviously got his goal. He got his goal. He did start a bit. He did. I think I agree with what you're saying. I think Jahan Bash again. I think there's one issue with him at the moment, and I don't want to criticize him because I, I think he's a great player. But I think that Jahan Bash has to become a little bit more of a, uh, it's a, it's a really again, it's a really bad example, but he has to become like a Neymar for Iran, essentially. He has to become the guy who, who demands the ball all the time. Because if you're not going to do that, then there's no point in you being a winger. A winger does not just run and do nothing and just defend. He has to try and get on the ball and take on the fullback. And he has to he has to try that as, as, a, as a regular thing against top teams as well. So, I get what he's saying, and um, or, or he or she, whoever it was, asking the question. I get what you're what you're saying about him becoming a little bit boring to watch, but 
against South Korea, I, I do think that he was doing nice things. He was getting the switch of play very nice. He was getting the ball out to um, out wide to Milad Mohamadi, for example, quite often. And I think that when he comes into his game, you can see glimpses of real class. But I think he has to do more on the ball and offer the ball more because he is such a talented player. He's got that great shooting ability, the great pace, but he needs to show it. He needs to show it. It's, it's a shame that he's not doing this so often. Yeah, and especially when, when you think about the fact that uh, he had more or less an underwhelming uh, first year at uh, Brighton as, as he hopes to improve in the future with that, of course. Now, Pasha, I want to get to you with this, uh, this, next, this final question that we have. Uh, this, is from, uh, this is from our follower, uh, Sarouche. He asks, do you think it's time Baron Vaughn should move to Europe finally? Bayron Van's perfect chance to move to Europe was uh, he had some offers after the World Cup. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I knew it wasn't going to happen. He is someone with a tough background and everything that he has, you know, been raised through and everything, the obstacles that he's been through. You could just say that, you know, he'll just rather be in the home comfort of his home country. And, uh, no, I don't see him moving. And at this point, I wouldn't even think a European club would even come after him. Maybe so much. Maybe it would say an Asian club. Uh, he's been a fantastic goalkeeper for Iranian national team. And uh, especially he's a big name, obviously, for club team for Paris Police. But not for a European club. I would say so. Maybe let's say he might get an offer from, let's say, an offer from Qatar or something like that. But his time is up for Europe. And even if he had an offer from Europe again, he wouldn't have um he would not have gone. Uh, and there's few players, I would say, right now, even our national team that, you know, and that comes back to the whole, um, like Sina likes to call it, the tribalism, unfortunately, with SLL and Paris Police is that they are become such big players that, you know, they love that attention and everything and whatnot. And, you know, I'm not going to name this player, but some people could, uh, who I'm referring to, there's a player that used to be Paris Police's goalkeeper and I'm in constant contact with him. And he told me many times that that's what he misses, is that he's like, I'm a nobody in this country right now. People barely know me unless it's like a, you know, a fan from that club. And I miss that comfort, you know, of being, you know, in the public image and everything. And I'm pretty sure some of these players, that's what they thrive on because they feel like heroes. Um, but to just cut it short again, no, I don't believe he's going to go to Europe. My final uh, question to all you guys is even to the you know listeners from wherever whichever country you're listening to is this is that what honestly you know Arya Pejma Samson even to our listeners you could tweet us this too is that what are you honestly hoping you know for for this team to happen on their Wilmots? do you want this team to just make it to the World Cup? you know, and just say that we just made it to the World Club and we're not going to qualify because, you know, with the issues. Or do you want to see something finally that let's build this attacking team, you know, and let's just hope that this is the right person for us to take us, not just to the World Cup, but for the first time in our history, passing, uh, I would say, you know, going to a round of 60. I mean, what do you guys honestly want to see is my biggest uh, question from this manager. One thing I for sure want to see, and is that I was watching the um, the is a game between Scotland and Belgium last night, and I was watching Belgium play, and I'm thinking, literally Belgium are playing every single best player they have on the pitch. Like it doesn't matter, they they've got players like who are like average on the bench, but they never got a chance to come on, and it is like. It's like, you know, they had Hazard, De Bruyne, Lukaku, Mertens, etc. They had best players on the pitch and they were just unbelievable. The scholar couldn't handle them. I want to see Iran be that kind of team who just, every single game, doesn't matter who it is against, I want to see us play our best lineup every time. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to, any excuses, oh, like, this guy it wasn't fit. Like, I don't care, man. I want to see our best, our best team play all the time because for me, as far as I'm concerned, if Iran plays their best, best team every single time, do you know how good we're going to be for the World Cup in 2022? By the time we come, that World Cup comes around, around and we've been consistently playing our best team, you know that that team is going to be ridiculously experienced and um, the chemistry they're going to have is unbelievable. If we keep playing like Cheshmi, we keep playing Shojai, it's not going to help the team. With you know the what I mean? Of uh, Majid Hosseini, right, Arya? 
Say that again. With the exclusion of Maggi, don't say me. <laughs> no, no, no. Maggi's the captain, my friend. <laughs> 2022 is the captain. I'm guarantee you that. <laughs> I was talking to a friend yesterday, and uh, he, he was like, Qatar is the host, so they have a, a, a space already. And there are four and a half uh, places for the Asian teams. And there are five Asian teams uh, that are always in the top five. And... Iran, so let's say there are the four ones. You could Iran be the fifth team here that will struggle and do have to do the long playoff thing? Yeah, if Iran comes with a in a group with Japan and Australia, who said that's something easy? Uh, or South Korea and Saudi Arabia? I mean, that's not easy games, and I'm sure they they all want to uh, beat Iran and uh, of course uh, take. Place uh, spot number one and two, and then Iran will have to do the long playoff thing, and I'm worried about that because uh, uh, away game in Saudi Arabia, although the, the games are still played in that not natural neutral uh, spot, which is a shame, but uh, away game in in Japan or an away game in Australia that haven't seen since 1997 with the famous 2-2 draw uh, in Melbourne. Those games won't be easy for Iran, and we know that Iran always struggles against uh, these middle teams, such as Uzbekistan and and China. So, I just want to see Iran hammer everybody, and and don't let their faith be in any other team's hands than their own. That's my two cents. Awesome, thank you guys. Uh, this has uh, been a pleasure again to host for you guys. I appreciate always. Uh being a mem- uh, member of of this team and as well as uh doing the editing it's 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 fantastic privilege to uh to help out and uh build the product uh for all of uh our listeners all the fans of team Millie. uh want to go through uh just uh, some current news uh might as well at the end of this episode latest rankings for the fifa futsal rankings uh, iran is third in the world right now there is a uh, under 18 tournament in russia I believe it was just a round robin format. They played. Iran was there and played some very stiff competition. Uh, lost four to two to Argentina. Before that, beat Armenia two zero and lost to the host Russia two to one. Also, congrats in order to uh, to Ali Gozadeh. He uh, just got married a few days ago. And uh, last but not least, uh, FC Kia, the uh, uh, Madavikia's club. He they their under thirteen team. They. Uh, they went to the uh, Basveldi Cup. I hope I pronounced that right. And in, in, uh, I believe that was in Holland. And they won the whole thing, beat uh, Atletico Madrid in the final, I believe. So that's, that's very impressive from them. Definitely building up a bright future. Also, yeah. um, one last point is Iran will break into the top 20 of the FIFA World Ranking this month. Which has been, I think, the last time we were top 20 was in the 2006 World Cup. I think we were 14th. So this is really, really good now. For friendlies, you know, organizing friendlies, we're going to be top 20 ranked. So it's a real big thing. Eight years of hard work from Carlos. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and one, one just final last thing. Uh, props to South Korea, the U20 team. They're in the finals in the U20 World Cup. So they have a really interesting young generation coming up and uh, uh, despite you know the all the uh, harsh words that uh, we have with the South Koreans it's, it's all love and I do respect the South Koreans a lot and whatever is good for Asian football will in the end be good for Iran as well so let's hope that they will win the finals against another surprise uh, which is Ukraine if I'm not mistaken so uh, yeah go South Korea yeah, and you got to appreciate their focus on grassroots level. That same goes for Japan. But uh, one thing I did wanted to say is that um, Samson stole out of my mouth was that I wanted to, you know, take the time to thank him um, because for every listener that listens to this pod and it's enjoyable, uh, whether you're committing to work or whether you're working out, um, whether you're listening to this with your girlfriend, which I hope you're not because that could lead to a breakup. But uh, <laughs> I just want to thank uh, Samson from here. 
uh, he puts in a lot of uh, effort and time, guys, you know, to, you know, do the editing and everything, you know, for our listeners worldwide. And so, you know, always, you know, don't just think it's just the people that are listening to this. Like, we're doing the pod and everything. Uh, Samson is our true hero. So I just want to give a major shout out right now. And uh, thank you so much. My dear friend, and it's good to be uh, everybody's part of this family. So, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Gold Bazan, and let's hope for the future. And like what Carlos always used to say, to the future. <laughs>